For this video I'm using half inch cold rolled steel to make an alignment tool for the tailstock. Here I'm just checking that it's checked fairly accurate. Touching off to set my zero. Now we just need to turn it down a few thousands until it's perfectly round. So here we are just making a few passes, a few thousandths each, until we are perfectly round. Not worried about the actual overall size, it just needs to be perfectly round. These passes I'm taking anywhere from three to five thousandths each. Um, going at a fairly high rate of speed, about as fast as I can go turning this steel. The very last cut I'll do just a couple thousandths deep and go nice and slow. It'll make a nice finish. Took about 40 thousandths off total. So here I'm rechecking it from the side that I just made perfectly round. So now we're just going to turn down the end that was inside the chuck so that it's same diameter all the way through. Um, right here we have it within four thousandths of an inch. That's really good because that's only two thousandths of an inch on each side. So ultimately our center won't be too far off from center. A thousandth or two isn't going to be a big deal. So now we're going to start turning down this other side now that we have it trued up. I'm going to go ahead and touch off so that we can find our zero point. So once it touches the part that's already been turned, we're going to set the dial indicator to zero. So we'll back it out. We'll make our passes until we get back to zero, and that'll make both sides match perfect. It'll be the easiest way. So again, same as the other side, about four to five thousandths on each pass until we get right there, the last couple thousandths. When we're down to that point, the last cut will be about a thousandth or two, real slow, nice and easy. Uh, it'll make a really nice finish. So the cross slide, I set it to about 45 degrees. It's not exact. It doesn't need to be exact. We just need to make a really sharp point. So with the cross slide set at an angle like that, instead of moving left to right, you're moving at an angle. And you keep moving it, you move the compound in towards the work a few thousandths, then run the cross slide back and forth, and uh, you do that a few times. Keep going until you've finally gone all the way through the full thickness, and you'll end up creating a sharp point, and that's what we're looking for. So again, final pass, very shallow, 
super slow and um, creates a really nice finish. The bit that I'm using has a very curved tip on it so it makes for a really nice finish. Um, there's the point right there. So now we'll take the uh, cross slide off and uh, there's the bolt right there. So this bolt holds it firm. It keeps it, if you loosen it, it'll allow it to move front to back. On the other side, this is kind of sort of like a gib almost, like on the cross slide. It kind of holds tension on it to keep it nice and square. So we loosen those up real good, make sure everything's moving around real free. Then we snug it all back up. We want it just snug. Because then we're going to have it all snugged up. We're going to get it roughly in the position that we need it. Um, you need to loosen the nut that holds the tailstock to the bed of the lathe. There we go, you can see it's moving forward and back. You get it pretty close, eyeball it, and then you go ahead and uh, tighten everything up. So we're going to use a feeler gauge. Mine, the one I'm using is four thousandths of an inch thick. If the tips are completely lined up perfect, then they're going to put pressure on it at the same exact point and it'll make it perfectly perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. Now if they're off a little bit, it's going to put, they're going to push past each other and that's going to make the feeler gauge lean to one side or the other. If you move the the tailstock forward or back, you'll notice the the feeler gauge will go left and right. And that's what we're looking for. We're going to get it in there, we're going to get it in place, and we're going to tap the tailstock with the hammer until it gets just about where it needs to go. And um, after hitting it with the hammer, we'll get it where it needs to go. We'll take it all off, we'll tighten it up, put it all back on, and it should be relatively perfect once it's put back on and then you can do a nice few firm hits with the hammer and get it just where it needs to be and your tailstock will be perfectly aligned So now I have it tightened back up, we'll go ahead and put the feeler gauge in there. You can see the back half of the feeler gauge is leaning to the right a little bit. This is just with real light pressure from the tailstock, not too much pressure. You don't want to build, bend, you know, dull the tips of the points or anything. But if you just hit it real firm, you'll notice it kind of moves straight and it's exactly where you need it to be. Um, and that right there is how you align your tailstock. So here is the finished tailstock alignment tool. There you go. Might need to be sharpened up from time to time, but that's easy enough. <laughs>